Hello, it's Debbie Gruber here from EasyPianoStyles.com and I'm going to show you a really cool rhythm pattern that you can use to accompany yourself or somebody else when you're playing. Now this would be for an up-tempo song and I'm going to demonstrate it first and then I'll break it down and show you how I'm doing it. It's very easy. So this is what it sounds like. Right? Another variation of that would be... Break it down. We have on, I'm doing this on a C chord. So on beat one, I'm playing in the left hand, I'm playing the root of the chord. Let's see. And on beat two, I'm playing the C chord. On beat three, I'm playing the fifth of the C chord, which is a G. And I like how it sounds going down to the G. So the fifth is the top note of the C chord, but we're that's called the fifth. And I'm playing it down below the C. And so we have left hands playing the C, right hands playing the chord. Left hand is playing the lower fifth of a C chord, and then the right hand is playing the C chord again, so it's like this. And the variation on that, there are lots of variations, so I'll just show you one of them, which you have. Like that. Okay, so you could do that on any major chord, any minor chord, any dominant chord. Let's do it on a D. Made, I'll do it on a D minor chord. So what's in a D minor chord? We have D, F, and A. Now again, the right hand is going to be playing the chords and the left hand is playing a kind of a swing bass. Normally when you're playing solo piano, the left hand would be playing the chord and the right hand would be playing the melody. But when you're accompanying, you don't need to play the melody because you're singing the melody or somebody else is singing the melody or playing the melody. So, um, the right hand is going to do the chord and the left hand does a bass line. So in the case of a D minor chord, the left hand would play the root of the chord, D, and then the right hand would play the D minor chord on beat 2. On beat 3, the left hand is playing the fifth of the chord, which would be the A, go down to it, and then the right hand would play the chord again, so it would be left, right, left, right, like that. variation would be the pop up. So how would we put this in a song? Well, again, we really would want to do this in an up-tempo song, not a, a slow song. So let's say we had, uh, if, I were, if I were a rich man. If I were a rich man. Just a straight. Um, how about Oklahoma? We'll do it. On. Oh, we'll do it. On. one chord per measure. You have the four beats, one, two, three, four. If there's two chords in the measure, this is on a G chord, let's go back to C. If there's two chords in a measure, you don't have time to do the root, the chord, and the fifth, and the chord, right? So we'd only have time to do the root and the chord, and then we would go on to the next chord. So if we have a C chord and a G chord in the same 4-4 four, four measure, we would go root, chord and now we go to the G chord. chord like that okay and if there's three beats in a measure that makes it really easy you'd play the root of the chord on beat one and on beat two and three we would play two chords in the right hand so for instance raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens bright copper kettles and warm wool and red so that's You don't need a lot of filling in, um, that, but that's the basic accompaniment pattern. So try that out on various major chords, minor chords, seventh chords, and then try it out on a song.
all you sing. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye.